Hi everyone, this is Eileen Pinto. Today I'm going to be talking about ways you can deal with grief. And one of them is finding free counseling services or at low cost in your community. So what I recommend is checking your local community college or your local university. For example, if you're a student at Cal State Fullerton, I recommend looking into the health center because they provide counseling services to students who go to Fullerton for free. And they provide low cost uh, fee for those who don't. Also, I recommend looking, if you don't mind the religious aspect to it, I recommend looking into some churches because they do offer free counseling services or at low cost. Also, another tool to use is Access California. They offer a variety of services and this can range from counseling They offer um, food services, crisis intervention, interns, and more. So I definitely recommend Access California because you do get to work one-on-one -on -one with the therapist. Also, I recommend if you're looking for a virtual resource, Crisis Text Line is available 24 seven. Like I said, it's virtual. All you have to do is text the number 741-741 and you will be uh, contacted by a person and they will help you um, not only talk about your issue, you can explain to them how you're feeling. And yes, that's another great resource. Also, um, another online resource is 2110C and if you go to their website you can look up counseling services and it will pull up all of the low cost or free services in Orange County. I did wanted to make a point for the crisis text line. It's offered to anyone who lives in the US. And the 211 OC is for those in Orange County. Like I mentioned down below. And for the Access California, it's for those who live in the Orange County area. So I doubt if you don't live near the Orange County area, I recommend looking into um, your city website. For example, if you live in um, the city of Riverside, type up their website and it will pull up all of the low cost and free counseling services. I hope this helped. Thank you so much. Hey guys, so today um, we're talking about grief. I want to explain to you that it is okay to cry and you should not be afraid to cry. So when you lose someone, it's just, you get this indescribable feeling and sometimes you may feel like your world's ending or you just can't um, take it in and you can't believe that it happened, but you have to learn how to properly grieve, which some people, they like to cry and that's okay. Even if you're a male, it's okay to cry i think it's very healthy and then people who try not to um cry they hold it in which is not good for your health if you hold your emotions your tears in too much then eventually it can be uh, harsh to your health and to your mental health so it is important to understand hey i am feeling this way and um 
it is okay to cry you're letting out these emotions and sometimes you just have to accept it and then eventually you will be able to move on but no matter what anyone says what society says it is okay for to cry even if you are a male because there is a stigma that men are tough and they have to hold back um, their feelings and have this wall up in front of them but no it is okay to cry especially when you lose someone very close to you hello welcome to wellness wednesday and today's topic is dealing with grief and i want to talk about how to know if you're grieving because the sudden loss of someone it could be very confusing and a bunch of mix of emotions and you don't know if it's temporary or if it's permanent but there's many stages that you go through when you are mourning the loss of someone or something and honestly it's a confusing very confusing period because you're one shocked and you just don't know what to do and don't know how to go about your day or your routine. Number two, pain and guilt. You might be, um, you know, blaming yourself for the sudden death or like the sudden loss of something. And another one would be a big one, which is anger. A lot of people feel very angry with themselves, with other people. And this could lead to um, pushing everyone away and could further into depression. Um, depression is a major, major one too as well. Um, that goes alongside with being unmotivated to go on with their day or do their daily routine. Um, but that is how you know you're grieving when you are all those emotions, two of those emotions, three of those emotions, or even one of those emotions. Um, you are probably dealing with the loss of someone or something. And it's really important to have hope and that it will be okay later on once you have coped with your feelings and emotions. Hi everyone, welcome to Wellness Wednesday and this week I'm going to tell you about what not to do when processing your grief. So for example, say someone close to you has died, a friend or a family member, and the grieving process, everyone does it differently, but what you don't want to do is keep your feelings inside and not talk to anyone about it because take it from my perspective, I had once had a family member die, a close family member, and I kept my feelings in. I didn't tell anyone how I felt. And for years I had avoided anything related to death, anything related to talking about them. And I was really close with this person and after they died, I just avoided everything about them. And it made my life miserable. It makes it miserable where you, bear, you can't talk to anyone about it. You can't do anything. You want to talk about it, but just the feeling, the afraid that you're going to be hurt is something that's bad. So I recommend, yes, it might take some time to talk about it, but try not to take too much time to where you can't do anything about it anymore. Because talking about your feelings is not that bad. And as soon as you get to talk about it, it becomes better and you'll be able to process it. I'm not gonna say faster, but you'll be able to process it better. And anytime that happens, you'll be able to health, healthy, health, be able to process your grief healthy, basically. taking your own time to process the emotions and feelings that go on when you're dealing with grief. Dealing with grief is something really hard to do and it's really challenging um, if you don't really understand why everything is happening. So when you're dealing with grief, um, honestly, take your own time to process the emotions and process the feelings that you're feeling and take your time to feel what you feel because it's very hard when you lose someone it's very hard and um there's no time limit for how long you have to grieve like you can grieve however much you need until you feel at peace or feel better about the situation if you are someone who's dealing with grief really take the time to process your own emotions and really take your own time to heal just because someone else feels like they're already healed and you're not healed don't force yourself to 
ignore those emotions and not feel those emotions and feel upset. Take your time and feel the way you feel and grieve the way you want to grieve and grieve with whatever time limit and whatever time frame that you want. Hey guys, so today for Wellness Wednesday, we're talking about dealing with grief and I'm going to talk about grief counseling or therapy. So just like going to therapy for any problem or event that's happened in your life, you need to talk it out and you need some help getting where you need to go. Grief counseling is going to help you, but specifically with the loss of a loved one. And you're not going to go away feeling any different. They're not going to change your mind about the relationship you had with your mother, your brother. They're going to help you figure out how you're feeling and be able to cope with what happened and move forward. You're not going to walk away forgetting who they were. And the wonderful thing about grief counselors is they're very empathetic. And empathetic means they're able to put themselves in your shoes and see how you feel. And because they can do that, they can really, really help you. And grief doesn't always come from the loss of a loved one. It can come from the loss of a friendship, a relationship. And they too can really, really help you figure out your thoughts and learn how to go forward with life while not forgetting who you loved, but learning how to cope and to live the life that you want to live, even though that they've passed. Hello everyone, my name is Sarah, and today for Wellness Wednesday, we'll be talking about how to deal with grief. And I'll be talking about the bad side, if what happens if you don't deal with grief properly. Research has found that Grief has a very powerful effect on your body. It can cause current health problems to actually worsen, or it can even cause new health problems. It can also increase your blood pressure, which increases the risk of blood clots. It also can um, fight your immune system. So it actually makes your immune system weaker, making you even more prone to infections and getting sick. And one of the craziest thing was that intense grief can actually cause your heart muscles to change, causing something called a broken heart syndrome, which has symptoms like a heart attack. So this is not information to scare you at all. I just want you to know these symptoms so that if you find someone, um, if you see someone that is struggling, that is getting sick often, that is grieving, but is also having these symptoms, I want you guys to be able to lend them a hand and be that friend for them. Thanks for watching guys. So I'm here to tell you about some healthy coping mechanisms for dealing with grief. The first thing I want to say about grief is that it's important to acknowledge your pain and give yourself time to grieve. One healthy technique to feeling your grief is a technique called deep breathing. Deep breathing helps you calm your mind and alleviate stress. If you practice deep breathing, you have to be sure to breathe through your belly. When you breathe in, your stomach should expand, and when you breathe out, your stomach should contract. And if you do the deep breathing, when you take a deep breath in, hold it for three seconds, and then let it out. This really helps with you know calming your mind and your body. Another healthy coping mechanism is joining a support group and talking through the grief. Some things that have helped me with dealing with grief is just talking to someone who understands, someone that's able to relate to me and support me in ways that I don't think that other people who haven't experienced grief would have been able to. One more thing that is good for dealing with grief is partaking in a hobby. Doing something small for yourself that you really enjoy helps you with recovery and finding a new rhythm and finding your passion again. Everybody, it's Naomi, one of the interns at Goals, and we are back with a Wellness Wednesday video. Um, we are going to be talking about coping with grief and loss, specifically the myths that are associated with grief and how to step into the healing process. So let's get started. So what is grief and what are some symptoms? So grief is a natural response to loss. It's the emotional suffering that one has when you lose something or someone that you love. All right. It can not only impact you emotionally, but as well as physically. There is more, the more loss that you have, the, in, the more intense the grief or uh, loss you're going to feel. 
And grief is not just limited to, you know, death. It's also divorce, loss of health, death of a pet, loss of a cherished dream, um, a loved one's serious illness. It could be loss of a friendship. Um, so don't feel ashamed for feeling the way that you feel. Okay, grief is a normal is a normal response and um, it may take some time to accept the loss but nonetheless um, it is a process and you do have to go through it so symptoms include shock disbelief fatigue anger um, guilt nausea uh, lowered immunity uh, weight loss weight gain it can also be aches and pains and even insomnia so now that we know that let's go ahead and talk about the myths and facts about grieving so the first myth is that the pain will go away fast if you just ignore it well in reality trying to ignore your pain or keep it from surfacing will actually make it worse in the long run all right um for real healing you it's necessary to uh face your grief and also actively deal with it the second myth is it's important to be strong in the face of loss so the fact is, is that feeling sad, frightened, or lonely is a normal reaction to loss, all right? Crying doesn't mean you are weak. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to protect your family or friends by putting on a brave face for them. In reality, it's actually good um, so that it, you can let your family know that you need help and they can be able to help you. All right, then the third myth is if you don't cry, it means you aren't sorry about the loss. Everybody deals with grief differently, all right? The normal response is sadness, but um, it doesn't necessarily mean that every individual copes with loss through crying. Um, many people show it different ways, right? So it's okay to uh, not be the one that cries because you just deal with it differently, all right? Then the last one is grieving should last about a year. There is no time limit for grief, all right? How long it takes differs from person to person. The last myth is moving on with your life means forgetting about your loss. Moving on doesn't, um, moving on actually means to accept your loss. It doesn't mean forgetting about it. Um, you can move on with your life um, and keep the memory of someone or something uh, you lost as an important part of you. Uh, the more we actually move on through life, the more memories, um, the more important memories can become to define who we are and impact the person that we become. All right, so now that we know that, let's go ahead and talk about how to deal with the grieving process. So there is a list of a couple steps that you can take. The first is to acknowledge your pain. You wanna know that your pain is there. And the second is to accept that grief can trigger many different and unexpected emotions. Grieving is not just solely limited to, again, sadness or crying. Uh, there's different emotions involved. Um, and then the third is understand your grieving process will be unique to you. Every individual is different and everybody deals with it differently and at different lengths of time. The fourth is, uh, the fourth is to seek out face-to-face -face support from people who love you and understand you. This could be friends, family, it could be joining a support group or even seeking out a therapist or grief counselor. The last is support yourself emotionally and physically. Um, that can mean facing feelings. It can mean expressing your feelings through creative outlets such as art um, or music. Uh, plan ahead for your triggers. So if you know the certain triggers exist for you, um, know, ha know have some steps to deal with it when those triggers do surface. Uh, sleep is good. Eating healthy is good. Exercising and also maintaining hobbies and interests because those things bring you joy. And the more joy you're able to feel, um, the the easier the grieving process will be. All right. So I hope this video helps you guys in any way possible. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Hey guys, welcome to Wellness Wednesday. For this week's topic, it is dealing with grief, and I will be talking about how to seek support from family or friends. The pain of grief can often cause you to want to withdraw from others and retreat into your shell. But having face-to-face -face support of other people is vital to healing from loss. 
While sharing your loss can make the burden of grief easier to carry, that doesn't mean that every time you interact with friends and family, you need to talk about your loss. Comfort can also come from just being around others who care about you. The key is not to isolate yourself. Turn to friends and family members now is the time to lean on the people who care about you even if, even if it if you take pride in being strong and self-sufficient rather than avoiding them draw f- friends and loved ones really close to you spend time together face to face and accept the access that is offered from them often people want to help but don't know how so just tell them what you need or you can join a support group grief can feel very lonely even when you have loved ones around you or friends sharing your sorrow with others who have experienced similar losses can help you um, overcome that um, grief so find a support group within your area such as your church school or even within your community or you can also um, talk to a therapist or a grief counselor Uh, if your grief feels like too much to bear find a mental health professional with experience in grief counseling an experienced therapist can help you work through intense emotions and overcome obstacles to your grieving and accept that many people feel awkward when trying to comfort someone who's grieving grief can be confusing sometimes frightening emotion for many people especially if they can ex- if they haven't experienced a similar loss themselves They may feel unsure about how to comfort you and end up saying or doing the wrong things, but don't use that as an excuse to retreat into your shell and avoid social contact. If a friend or loved one reaches out to you, it's because they care.